Out in Berea, the wide receivers working on catching it and ball security, and coaches with boxing gloves punching it out. Joe Woods wants to focus on turnovers, even the pound puppies up for adoption, working on stripping the toy away and getting it going out in Berea. Good Wednesday afternoon to you. The final day fans are allowed out in Berea at training camp and uh, they get to see Anthony Schwartz, the rookie wide receiver, back on the field in team drills. That's always a good sign. Uh, yesterday, Ronnie Harrison and Grant Delpit back in team drills, uh, getting things going as well. All signs pointing ahead. Uh, Brown's getting ready to welcome in the New York Giants tomorrow and Friday for joint practices. Kevin Stefanski talked about those and how important they are for the Browns. With these two days, obviously it's, it's great work against a, a really quality opponent uh, and then with the preseason game, but we don't want to overvalue these two days versus you know last week Thursday or whatever it is. We want to make sure that this whole thing uh, is a body of work. Uh, will it be a good uh, opportunity for guys to, to go up against a different scheme? Absolutely. But to say that jobs will be decided by these two, I think would probably be a little strong. Let's welcome in Dennis Maniloff, the D-Man uh, from WTAM as well as 106.9. D-Man, appreciate the time and the insights. Um, joint practices, how important are they? What do you, what do you want to see and what don't you want to see? Well, I, I like what uh, Kevin Stefanski said. You know, you don't want to overrate uh, the fact just because a, another team's coming in that automatically raises the expectation level. And, it kind of also would not would kind of knock the team if it wasn't able to get work done without an opponent coming in. So you don't want to overstate it, but it is nice, I'm sure, for those guys to see uh, different faces and, uh, you know, and, and test themselves, test what they've learned so far in camp against another opposition. Um, as far as what I don't want to see, I mean, it's obvious injuries. That's where... I mean, honestly, as someone who's looking forward to this Brown season, like I've looked forward to very few Brown seasons in the last, you know, certainly since 99, I've been keeping my fingers crossed every day that significant injuries do not occur. And I cannot wait until we get to uh, the opening game that matters. Uh, so that's the, the key, what I don't want to see. What I do want to see is, you know, execution, by the offense against the Giants defense and and you know see if it if it hums uh, accordingly because so far it looks like certainly the wide receiver group has been dynamic uh, I want to see if that can translate yeah I would agree and, and um, I touched on it a little bit so uh, Ronnie Harrison a, a safety a guy the, the Browns expect big things from had been sidelined uh, hamstring injury he got back on the field yesterday he talked about his health and where he is relative to being ready uh, to start the season. Uh, it went well. Um, first day back moving with the guys, it felt great um, being back out there. We were watching you even just taking the, the mental reps on the sideline. How, how much has that helped you over the last week or two, just being able to be out there and just watching things go on? Um, really just kind of slowed the game down for me. Um, just being able to see what kind of mistakes uh, the other guys are making and just being able to learn from it on the sideline from a coach's perspective. Um, it just helps me with my game a lot, so i uh, just been trying to learn. Do you feel like you're behind um, because of the time you missed? Oh, not at all. Um, not at all. If anything, probably just helped me out a little bit or gave me a little boost because I was able to focus more on the football side of things instead of my body and um, just allowed me to focus on that. And, D-Man, it's very interesting. When asked, you know, he said, no, he's not behind at all that – you know, I, I, he's got to say that, but the way he said it makes me believe he doesn't feel like he's behind. Sorry, I was just checking my phone to make sure nobody got injured. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ronnie Harrison was a fun guy to watch last year. And, you know, he, in my mind, was not part of the problem uh, or was not one of the main problems in that uh, defensive secondary that we saw break down a lot last year. He was an intriguing guy, and he's big, and he's strong, and, you know, um, I, I'm looking forward to that triumvirate of Harrison, Delpit, and Johnson in the uh, in the Browns' uh, deep backfield, their safeties. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, a guy like Harrison who's been around a little bit, he, I would assume he would be able to 
figure things out real quickly after an absence. You know, the, the other one that came back was Grant Delpit, and um, a guy that was injured all of last year, um, then kind of had a hamstring crop up. Uh, Delpit talked about getting back on the field and where he is. No, I've been taking it, um, taking it slow, just making sure that I come back 100%. Uh, it's been frustrating not being out there with my teammates, but, you know, when the time comes, you know, I'm available. Uh, yeah. I missed him last year and then stung off his hamstring. Did you, uh, how far behind are you? I'm not behind at all. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Why, why is that? I've been preparing, um, working out every day, uh, making sure I'm working two times harder than the next person. Um, and that's the mentality you got to have. So I'm not behind at all. And again, D-Man, a guy that is missed practice. I think he was on the field for nine team reps, missed all of last year. Doesn't feel like he's behind. Yeah, he was defiant with Jeff Shudell. <laughs> I'm not behind at all. Jeff's like, wait a minute, you aren't you? And listen, Grant Delphin, unlike Harrison, doesn't have NFL reps in the regular season. So, uh, you know, he's got to be on the field as much as humanly possible, as much as he can stand. And, um, you know, I, I would think he would be behind, but I don't mind him. I don't blame him for saying he's not. Yeah, you know, let's talk a little bit about what we saw on the field. What impressed you the most uh, about the Browns' first preseason game? Browns' first preseason game? Oh, that's easy, Dave, that they were responsible for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars cutting Tim Tebow. <laughs> I mean, even Herb, Herb's like, I can't, I can't watch this. I mean, there, there's no way I can watch these wiffle ball blocks and expect to keep this guy on my team. So the Browns drove Tim Tebow out of the NFL probably for good. This was the second go-around. Um, but as far as what they did on the field, I mean, of course, you didn't see a lot of the stars, if any of the stars. Uh, but I like the way the second unit and the third unit was executing. I, I like, of course, my guy, you know, how am I not going to miss – or how am I going to miss my guy, Jeremiah Wusu koromoa I mean, part of me feels a little uneasy watching him as number 28. I don't think 28 does him justice. Because <laughs> to, to me, 28 feels like a cornerback. And, and he's more, obviously much more than that. But he's flying around the field. You get the impression that at the more comfortable he gets with the NFL speed of the game and the physicality, the more Joe Woods is going to turn him loose because he just has a nose for the ball. He figures out a way to get to the football, to get to the, car the ball carrier. He sifts through the trash. I mean, you saw him do that on the sack, and, and you saw him do it out on one of his hits. So the Joker looked great, and, and you know, that – was obviously good news for the Browns uh, and their fans. Newsom, you know, I, I didn't think he was great by any stretch, but I didn't think he was bad. Um, you know, some balls were caught on him, but he was right there when they were. So to see the two big guys from the 2021 draft, Greg Newsom, the first round pick, Owusu Koromoa, the second round pick, to, to see them playing well, regardless of who it was against, what iteration of the Jaguars, uh, that was a good thing to see. Yeah, I would agree wholeheartedly. The D-man, Dennis Maniloff and I are going to step aside, take a quick time out on the other side of the break. Uh, Baker Mayfield made the NFL's top 100. We'll talk about that a little bit. Plus, um, who else from the Browns might be in the top 100? The final 40 will be revealed Sunday. Sports for CLE. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back, back to new friends, new classroom, and learning new things. Back to wearing shoes, man, like real shoes. Back to rushing to class. Back to having questions, lots of questions. Back to vending machine dinners. Back to too much caffeine, too late at night, but feeling like it was a night well spent. Back to pursuing your dreams and taking control of your future. Come back to go forward. Try C, where futures begin. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. 
a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. We continue talking Browns football with the D-man, Dennis Maniloff from WTAM 1100 and 106.9 FM. So, Marcellus Wiley um, from FS1's Speak for Yourself talked about whether he thought Baker Mayfield deserved to be in the NFL's top 100. Mayfield was number 71. Heck no. You got to earn what you eat out here. You eat what you kill. Baker Mayfield ain't killed enough being no top 100. Let me kill Acho's first point, though. He said, oh, well, there were eight quarterbacks that um, won playoff games last year. So, yeah, you got to respect them. And Baker Mayfield was one of them. Russell Wilson didn't win a playoff game last year. Deshaun Watson didn't win a playoff game last year. Dak Prescott didn't win a playoff game last year. I think they belong in the top 100. But Baker Mayfield, oh, you ain't getting in just because your team is great and you kind of good. That ain't going to get it. Now, y'all want to know what my resume looked like? Yeah, I was in the top 100 twice. I was in the top 50 twice. Number 38, number 44. Damn right, we ain't had no ceremony. They ain't had no big reveal. They just put it out there. Okay, so I know what I'm talking about here. I also know that Baker Mayfield has never been to a Pro Bowl including last year, since Otto told me to stay focused on last year. No Pro Bowl last year in this amazing year. No Pro Bowl. No Pro Bowls, no Go-Go's. That's how I think about it right now. But speaking of the Pro Bowl, because this is a list of 100 players, and Baker Mayfield shouldn't be on it, because if you think about it, he's not even a top 10 quarterback. If you're not a top 10 quarterback and there are relatively 22 positions on the football field, offense and defense. You do the math and tell me if Baker Mayfield should be top 100. And I had to do a little research here. And I came up with the understanding that there are 265 active players that are pro bowlers. And y'all trying to tell me that Baker Mayfield should be in the top 100 when he's not even one of those guys? I think it's important to note the top 100 is voted on by NFL players. <laughs> has, a, has a little bit more credibility than, uh, than somebody sitting behind a desk like me. You know, I love Marcellus Wiley uh, most of the time. How he could mention Deshaun Watson, given all that's surrounding Deshaun Watson right now, the reports are that he's not even going to play for the Houston Texans. Uh, and... and He's, you know, neck deep in all kinds of legal trouble and all these allegations. So I don't know why Wiley would mention Deshaun Watson at this particular time. I get his overarching point, though, about the Bake Show really, you know, hasn't proven anything uh, on a significant level, Pro Bowl being one of them. Um, yeah, he, he hasn't been to a Pro Bowl, and he hasn't strung together – uh, at least two great seasons in a row. Yes, he had the rookie touchdown passing record and, and looked good, but then he fell off in 2019 before rebounding in 2020. So I'm okay with somebody saying, hey, he doesn't deserve the top 100 until he puts together back-to-back -back really good years. Um, but I can also understand how he could get in there. Well, I mean, the players voted on it. I did. Yeah. That so the guys that are going against him thought he was they good enough like to be on the top 100. So he can be on the top 100. I mean, that's it's it's pretty simple. It's not way, like, 
It's not like we're randomly picking names out of a hat or we're asking media people who have a bias. It's the guys that are playing against them. Yeah, and, and by the way, Dave, uh, none of it matters when uh, yeah when the game starts. It, it doesn't matter if you're top two, top 100, top 500. Yeah, you got to win games. So as long as we're on the top 100, so Miles uh, Miles Garrett and Nick Chubb, do you think they're in the top 100? And do you think there's another guy? So I think it's 40 to one get named. Uh, this Sunday, they, they get revealed through the thing on, on NFL Network. Um, I would assume Nick Chubb, Miles Garrett, probably in the top 25. Do you think anybody else from the Browns is on that list? Um, Jarvis Landry was at 94. Baker Mayfield, 71, were the, were the two that, that were in, I think it was, you know, 100 to 41. Uh, let me think here. Uh, certainly Chubb, as you said, Garrett. Mayfield, okay. Um, one of the O linemen, but but then again, I mean, Wills hasn't played enough. Treader is is a great lunch pail guy, but I don't know if he's viewed as elite. Uh, Conklin's in a right tackle now. M maybe a Batonio or a Teller, but I don't know that they would be that high. I mean, they would have to be in the back 100 to get in. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I, I couldn't think of anybody else. Yeah, that, that would be that, – that's what I'm curious to see is if Batonio or Teller um, has enough going that, that they would do that. All right. So, um, Bleach Report. Players thriving thus far in new situations. Uh, named five of them. One of them was John Johnson the third, uh, the Brown safety. Yeah, I mean, he, he was doing fine in, in uh, L.A., okay? So, it's not like – he had to have this new situation in order to thrive. But I, I've just really enjoyed watching the clips, you know, that I've seen from camp and, you know, the way he talks and, and how intelligent he is about the game. And you can just sense that he's going to make a huge difference back there at safety for the Browns. Yeah, and, and you know, the thing that it appears, you know, teammates, his former teammates have said it quite often – he makes guys around him better. Listen to what uh, Ronnie Harrison and Grant Delpit had to say about playing with John Johnson. Johnson, oh, just his range and ability and uh, how much he loves football. Like, you can just look at him and tell at practice how much he loves football. You know, he's usually first in all the drills, um, even special teams. Like, he's on a lot of special teams. Like, he loves football. And it comes with experience and confidence and having seen it before. You know, uh, he's been in the league for a while, so, you know, that, that comes with that. Hopefully I can pick up on that fast. Uh, it's part of the game. When you were out there yesterday, did you, did you feel just as fast and everything? As yeah, yeah. I felt like second nature. Uh, I didn't really miss a step. Um, so hopefully I come out today, repeat it, feel great again. And again, D-man with, with a guy like Denzel Ward even, and certainly Greg Newsom, I think John Johnson and Troy Hill are going to have a, a pretty big impact um, on both of those guys. Yeah, Dave, it feels like John Johnson III has been around forever. You know what I mean? He's 25. It's like we talk about him like this grizzled veteran uh, because he's had such an impact in such a short period of time. But he's only 25 years old. His best NFL is ahead of him. And, you know, when I think about guys in this upcoming year that the Browns can ill afford to lose to injury – I mean, he's right up there, and I haven't even seen him play one down with the Browns uh, in a game that matters. He's right up there with Miles Garrett on the defensive side for guys that the Browns can ill afford to lose. Yeah, I would agree, and, and one of the reasons why is, you know, how many times did we see tight ends deep or guys get deep um, last year? And, and with a guy like John Johnson, a, a lot of that should be – Held in check. Indeed. All right, let's take a look. Um, Adam Shine uh, from NFL.com ranked the top nine defenses in the NFL. Rams were one, Buccaneers two, Colts three, Ravens four, Browns number five. And D man, if the Browns have the fifth ranked defense in the NFL, it's going to be a whole lot of fun in Cleveland this fall. Hey, every time I'm on with you, Dave, I got to do this. <laughs> That's the brake pumping. 
I mean, the fifth best defense in the NFL? Are you kidding me? Um, if everything goes right, okay, maybe. But you got to prove it to me first. I mean, you, you ha- I have to see what this defense can do. I have a lot of faith in Joe Woods. I, I have a lot of faith in the front office bringing in guys uh, who can play and who have brains. But I still got to see it first. I mean, this is an unproven commodity here. And not only do they have to, you know, perform, but in doing so along the way, they got to stay healthy. So because there are certain guys who are definite injury concerns, such as uh, Jadavion Clowney or Greedy Williams or Grant Delpit, for that matter, you have to see what they can do. So before I, I say they're the fifth best defense in the NFL, uh, I need to see it first. Okay, I, I'll give you that. But say the potential is there, correct? The the pieces, if they come together correctly, are there. Sure it is. Right, but when I look at, you know, his top nine, I mean, I'm looking at the – I like the Washington football team's defense better than Cleveland's based on what I saw from the WFT last year. Uh, as one example, the Bills are pretty darn good. Denver's nasty. So, yeah, potential for the Browns, but I wouldn't go so far as to put them a fifth best in the NFL. All right, fair enough. Uh, the D-man, Dennis Manloff, and I'm going to step aside to take a quick time out. On the other side of the break, the long-awaited debut of Chub Crunch Cereal. We'll tell you where you can get it. We'll also hear from Stump Mitchell on Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Back to new friends, new classroom, and learning new things. Back to wearing shoes, man, like real shoes. Back to rushing to class. Back to having questions. Lots of questions. Back to vending machine dinners. Back to too much caffeine. Too late at night. But feeling like it was a night well spent. Back to pursuing your dreams and taking control of your future. Come back to go forward. Try C, where futures begin. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Sports for CLE continues. We continue talking Browns. Nick Chubb cereal, Crub Crunch, Crub <laughs> Chubb Crunch. <laughs> Say that quick ten times. Is finally available in stores. Uh, all the proceeds will benefit charity. Here is how they announced uh, where you can get Chubb Crunch. Yeah, I mean, Cleveland is everything. They're the most loyal fans in the National Football League. And ever since I came here three years ago, they've had my back. So, uh, okay. Chubb will have a cereal that will be available coming out at Heinen. To have my own bowl of cereal. And I'm blessed and I'm lucky to be here. I love it. First Candle is an organization that helps with, with uh, infants dying with SIDS, sudden infant death. Any way I can to give back, to be there for my sister, the rest of my family, you know, any way I can be back, you know, be there for them, especially this is one way I can show them that, you know, I love them and I care for them. You can purchase Tub Crunch at PLBSE.com or local Heinz in Cleveland or the UGA bookstore. Go Browns. It's a superhero. Wait. It is a superhero-looking logo. 
wait a minute. Did I not hear a, a fellow by the name of Dave Bacon mentioned in the hype video? That's because we I were talking what? about Chub Crunch when they announced it. Awesome. <laughs> that was so cool to hear Dave Bacon's voice in the Chub Crunch, uh, cr Crumb Chunch <laughs> video. Uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> that definitely has a superhero uh, feel to it, but it also has a Halloween feel to it. I, I, I mean, are they intentionally going to... It, it just feels like they're going to break it out on Halloween. <laughs> Halloween's <laughs> only like a couple months it. away, buddy. We're, we're in fall football yeah. season. It's you know what? Orange, it's got a pumpkin shape <laughs> to it and everything. Looked almost like the Batman logo. It, you know what? It's... <laughs> The, the cool thing is he is giving the proceeds to charity, and so it's it's all good. So Stump Mitchell talked um, about Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb reaching 1,000 yards each. Uh, that was the goal last year, didn't quite get there. The question was, um, what happened last year? Can you do it this year? Well, both of those both of those guys have to have the opportunity to perform every play, regardless of what, what the play is. But we know that Kareem is our third down back. Unless it's third and one, then they could stay in the ball game. But, but Kareem is also a starter. He could do whatever. So it doesn't matter which one of those guys are in. Now, there's a, a, a certain number of touches Coach Stefanski want Nick to have. So I have to juggle that the entire game. You know, I don't, I don't want to be over that by more than two, because then I'm going to get you. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, it pretty much, uh, depending on the floor of the game and, and how many touches he's got in the first or the second quarter, uh, you know when to put a guy in. And again, uh, both those guys complement each other really well. And, and Stump Mitchell, a uh, guy that kind of makes the calls for, the, for when they're in and when they're resting. That is such a legendary beard. <laughs> I mean, we have to have Stump with the white beard. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a great problem to have to try to figure out how to get these guys enough touches and, you know, Chubb and Hunt backfield, one of the best in the NFL. I don't need to project that because I saw it last year. So uh, I can't wait for uh, for these guys to uh, to do it again. All right. So uh, let me ask you this, D-Man. Do you think they will play the regulars against the Giants? If you're Kevin Stefanski, would you? Would you kind of ease them in? Uh, let's see. I I wouldn't. You know, my, personally, I wouldn't just because I want to get my starters to the, the starting gate uh, with as little amount of potential injury as possible. And, but I could see why you would want to get your starters out there or your regulars, your stars, for some uh, some regular work, or even if it's only a couple of series uh, in a game that, even though it doesn't matter, it's against another team. But personally, I would not play my major guys until game one. Yeah, if there's any question at all, certainly I, I would uh, I would err on the side of caution. Well, Ronnie Harrison kind of talked about that whole thought process of, you know, being smart with coming back uh, from injury. The training staff, and they just wanted to make sure that I was going to be okay getting back out there. Um, didn't want to be dealing with this going into the season. Ron, you full go to, for tomorrow then? I'm not sure. It's on them. You know, this is my first week back, yeah, so it's kind of like working back in. So I'm not sure. How anxious do you think guys are though to to go against the Giants and hit somebody else? Oh, I think it'll be great. You know, I think this team is really anxious to keep working. You know, especially after the Jaguars game, we see kind of where we are. So we just want to keep improving on that week to week. Ryan, do you think you? Uh, I'll say you specifically, but players, do you guys need uh, some kind of? some game action before the season starts you need to play in a preseason game. i think it's different you know player to player you know um, you know some people may feel like you know that the preseason they don't need you know it might just be a risk of injury or something like that but a lot of guys some other guys like to get their feet wet and get their timing down so um i think it's just player to player how about you then? um with me i mean I, this is my fourth year you know i mean i've been playing football a long time um, I wouldn't mind going out there playing, get my feet wet, but I mean, at the same time, I'm ready. 
And Dima, that's the thing. It's it's kind of got to be a case by case situation. Yeah, I, I like what what Harrison said there. I mean, he, I would prefer they don't play, but I, I I've never sniffed the NFL, so I wouldn't know how difficult it is. I can only imagine how difficult it is to play that game at that level. But yeah, I mean, to, to his point, Miles is a, is an example. Okay, so it Miles Garrett, if Miles Garrett tells the coaching staff. Hey, I'm good. Green light me to the opening game. What are you going to do? Say, no, Miles, you got to play for three series against in a meaningless exhibition game. You know? So to me, it, it, it would make sense for Kevin Stefanski and his staff to get the input from the various guys. Maybe there's, you know, a, a standout regular on the Browns who just needs to get hit, you know, or needs to feel that in in real time even though it's exhibition um whereas other guys wouldn't so i i totally see where uh or hear where ronnie harrison's coming from the d-man dennis maniloff and i are gonna step aside take a quick time out on the other side of the break we'll hear uh, stump mitchell talk about kevin stefanski's offense sports for cle will be right back stay with us For CLE continues, I'm Dave Bacon. We continue talking Browns football. A Stump Mitchell running back coach, run game coordinator, talked about Kevin Stefanski and how this offense might evolve. And you never know, uh, the more toys that Kevin has, the better he is as a play caller. So you just never know what, what's going on in his mind. It's always something creative to uh, kind of catch the defense off guard. If you got skill, Coach Stefanski find a way to make it happen. You're not just a receiver. You're not just a back or a tight end if there's some things that you can do. Uh, and I think that makes it exciting for the football players. It makes it exciting for the fans, and it makes it exciting for us as, a, as an offensive unit. And, uh, D-Man, I think the other thing is that's a sign of a good coach. Plays to the player's strengths, doesn't put somebody necessarily in a box and, and say, boy, this is what this person can do. Yeah, Dave, and listen, I, I, I'm a big fan of Kevin Stefanski's. There's no question about it. And, you know, he's done great things so far. But it would be disingenuous if I didn't mention the divisional round against the Chiefs and why I have a bit of concern about Kevin Stefanski in big games. This play calling that he did against the Chiefs, I know the Chiefs were – you know, we're, are good, I, I, really good. And their defense can be formidable. But the Browns had plenty of weapons that that day, that game in, in the divisional round, and only managed four, uh, 17 points. So I, I, I got to see. And, and you look at Kevin Stefanski's play calling in, in big games going back to his Vikings days. And – you know, it hasn't exactly been stellar. Let's put it this way. The offense hasn't exactly been lights out. So I need to see Stefanski fully utilizing all these toys and putting up these great numbers against against good competition because that divisional round game still bothers me to this second because it was an opportunity lost given that uh, Patrick Mahomes was out after two and a half quarters. Yeah, I I, uh, I can't argue with uh, with that. It was it was an opportunity lost uh, without question. All right, uh, Ronnie Harrison back on the field practicing uh, as of yesterday. Um, talked about the importance of safeties in Joe Woods' defense. 
Very important. Um, every well, linebacker is very important too, but safety, you know, it's, it's a big part of the defense. We have to make a lot of checks and calls, and he depends on us to do a lot of things. So um, it's very important. Yes, ma'am. Joe, Joe was uh, talking during the spring, like he was watching tape, and I, I forget what he said he did, but he, he was like surprised. It's like, oh, that's Ronnie. Right. So, uh, how more, com how much more comfortable are you now with an off season, kind of having been with this team for a year, and then kind of fitting in here? Um, way more comfortable. You know, um, just kind of feel like I've I've been here for a while now. Um, just being a year uh, with this off season and being able to go through the playbook again and being out here for the extra reps. Um, it just helps a lot, so it should be great this year. And, and D-Man, how excited are you to see what this defense looks like now that, you know, the athleticism and talent level have been upgraded? Very. And, you know, and, and I understand the, uh, the idea that safeties are very important in Joe Woods' scheme, especially uh, given that, it, you know, it feels like he's going to do it. He's going to give a lot of emphasis to the, the line and the safeties with the linebackers being important, but not as important. Uh, that said, every level is critical. And we, we saw breakdowns when the Browns had trouble defensively. It wasn't just in the defensive backfield, even though it seemed that way, there were breakdowns at each level. So um, I, I can't wait to see what an upgraded talent infused defense looks like. Uh, under Joe Woods, and again, keeping the fingers crossed that the main guys stay healthy. Do you expect them to to, to blitz a little bit more and maybe take a, a few more risks? They were they didn't do that a whole lot last year, and it looked like at least um, in the preseason game there was a little bit more of that. Yes, I do, and one of the reasons is John Johnson the third. I mean, I, I think John Johnson the third is so good at diagnosing uh, what's happening on the other side of the ball uh, before it happens that he will be able to say, okay, you know, he'll be able to make a call on the fly, even if, if Joe Woods hasn't done it. I would think that Johnson would get the autonomy uh, to audible, if you will. Uh, so I, I think that with Johnson back there, as smart as he is, Combined with Woods having more tools in the tool chest, more toys in the in the box, as Stump would say about Stefanski's offense, that combination and Walker being out there as a very bright guy as well, uh, I think you're going to be seeing more uh, of the exotic type stuff. Not heavy, not heavy on it, because you don't want guys to lose their assignments and get, get cute out there. But I, I think you'll see more creativity which typically in the NFL creativity on defense comes in the form of uh, some kind of blitz package all right let's shift our focus uh, before I let you go um, Demetri Felton looked pretty good um, he was wide receiver most of uh, of last week and, and really training camp to date leading up to it looked pretty good as a wide receiver this week they're having him work out at running back Kevin Stefanski talked about Felton and, and how valuable that vers versatility is. You know, he played both in college, Zach, so you knew he'd be able to do both. Uh, we have always planned to bounce him back and forth. There's been some injuries to the wide receivers that have made it really necessary for him to go into that room for some extended periods of time. He's done a really nice job with both. Uh, so we're going to try and keep him at the running back position as much as we can this week, get a good look at him there. But uh, with his tape and his experience, it's not surprising that he can do both. And D-Man, he looked really good uh, as a slot receiver against the Jaguars, and, and that's a late-round pick again. But um, I like what I saw. Yeah, I can't remember the measurables on Felton. I, I'm wondering why this guy fell so far, because he he's looked good, and the reports on him are all positive, almost all positive, uh, coming out of Browns camp. So. Yeah, he's a guy that is definitely worth watching. And, you know, he's a skilled position player with versatility who has, I would think, opened eyes of the Browns coaches. The other thing I would say is keep an eye on special teams. If he starts going back uh, with that first team punt or kickoff uh, return thing, that, that means he's making the team. He's probably making the team anyway. He's kind of in that, in that fringe. But once you start seeing him significantly on special teams, 
that is a key to a fifth receiver, sixth receiver, whatever, fourth running back, that that guy's on the team. I agree. Yeah, I think that could very well be where he starts his uh, NFL career. The D-man, Dennis Maniloff, appreciate the time and the insight. So you can listen to him, uh, Indians pre and post game, uh, WTAM 1100, 106.9 FM. D-man, appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Dave. All right, uh, the D-man, Dennis Maniloff. We're step aside, take a quick time out. On the other side of the break, we'll talk more Browns. Kevin Arnold joins us. Sports for CLE. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Back to new friends, new classroom, and learning new things. Back to wearing shoes, man, like real shoes. Back to rushing to class. Back to having questions. Lots of questions. Back to vending machine dinners. Back to too much caffeine. Too late at night. But feeling like it was a night well spent. Back to pursuing your dreams and taking control of your future. Come back to go forward. Try C, where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. back sports for CLE we continue talking Browns football and some concerning news from out at Browns camp in Berea Grant Delpit who uh, was just getting back on the field walked off the field with trainers the Browns have confirmed that he re-aggravated that hamstring um, that had kept him out for a while so uh, Grant Delpit uh, leaves practice with the trainers re-aggravates the hamstring injury uh, certainly not the news uh, that uh, you wanted to hear out of Berea. Uh, Jedrick Wills also kind of got banged up in team drills, missed the end of team drills. No report on um, that. Uh, didn't look terribly significant. We'll wait to hear. And also Jadavian Clowney not practicing again today, um, which just get to the regular season. All right. Uh, let's welcome in Kevin Arnold from the Voice of the Land podcast. Um, and Kevin, you, you hate to hear um, the, the news about Grant Delpit. And, and anybody who's had a shoulder or a, or a leg injury, you always worry about overcompensating it. And, and that's what I'm beginning to become concerned about um, with the hamstring issues with Grant Delpit coming off the Achilles. Yeah, Dave, and we had heard all offseason how hard he was working to come back from that. And, you know, OB, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Grant Delpit, all these guys kind of coming back from the injury, but especially a major injury like Delpit had, putting so much work into that, you know, sometimes you can overcompensate and those concerns are real. And I know a lot of fans are, are frustrated, but, you know, I, I would just tell all Browns fans, as much as you might be frustrated because you want to see this talented player – Get on the field and help this team. Grant Delpit has got to be, if not more so, as frustrated with this process as well. And we can only just wish him the best as he continues in this recovery process. And, and hopefully he can get out there and have an impact on this team. But more so just for him as a person, being able to get back to the game that he loves and and, and play it at, at full strength and show what he can really do and why he was a second-round pick. Yeah, and, and Kevin Stefanski had um, alluded to this a little earlier. You can train all you want, but football, you put a different type of stress on your muscles uh, and, and running and cutting and doing those kind of things. So, again, still plenty of time before um, 
before it counts for real, and you certainly hope uh, this is just a minor setback, but you're starting to become, be beginning to become concerned with Grant Delpit, and, and can he get back on the field? Absolutely. The, the, concern, the concern is real. You know, is he going to be a guy that's, that's injury prone his entire career, or is this just all part of this, this recovery process? And if he can get through this hamstring, he can kind of get on the other side, and like we said, get back on the, back on the field. But the conversation is real. Uh, about the recovery element and is he going to be injury prone? You, you hate to have that kind of news come out because every single day, I think we're all kind of just tuned in to the beat reporters out there at camp and now going into practices and these joint practices with the Giants kind of, you know, okay, what kind of work are they doing? But also, you know, is there any sort of injury news? We're kind of keeping that side eye on the injuries because this team is talented but you gotta, you gotta knock on wood and, and hope that this team can stay healthy because that is going to be a big factor in any team's ability to have a successful season. Yeah, and, and we certainly hope the best for uh, second year safety Grant Delpit that he can get past the hamstring and get back on the field. All right, uh, top 10 players who are under 25, actually 25 and under, according to NFL.com. Number one in the NFL, pa Patrick Mahomes. Number two, McCaffrey. Number three, Miles Garrett, and Nick Chubb checks in at number nine. So the Browns have Garrett at three, Chubb at nine, as far as 25 or younger players in the league. Yeah, and, you know, of course, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen from the from Baker's quarterback class. So before fans kind of, you know, kind of wonder, oh, well, more disrespect for Baker. Well, of course, Baker Mayfield being 26 years old, so he's not he does not qualify for the list. But, you know, I, looking at this list, Yes, Miles Garrett is one of the, the top 10 players uh, under 25, 25 years or under, but also in the league as well. And as the NFL and NFL.com kind of continue to bring out their top 100 players, I'm sure you will you know, be a little while before we see Miles Garrett kind of more towards the, the top 10 as they go 100 and up to number one. But Nick Chubb, I think, is is the other one that you really have to look at on this list because He's quietly made a name for himself in this league. And, you know, back in his rookie year, he saw what he could do at Oakland and people started clamoring more Chubb, more Chubb. Well, you know, once he got his opportunity, he solidified his, his spot in that backfield. And, and he's not going to do a lot of talking. He's probably, anybody asked him a question about, you know, how does it feel to be in, you know, top 10 of uh, players 25 years or under, be mentioned with this class of players. He's not going to say much. He's, He's just going to continue to build on his career, and all of his talking is going to be on the field. Yeah, and, and it'll be interesting to see where Nick Chubb ends up because it's voted on by the players, and that has a little bit more weight in my mind than, than most lists. All right, Anthony Walker. We've mentioned uh, joint practices coming up with the uh, New York Giants tomorrow as well as Friday and then a, a preseason game with the Giants on Sunday. Anthony Walker talked about preseason games versus joint practices and was there a benefit was one more taxing was one better i can't speak for everyone um, for myself i feel like uh, i can get hurt doing anything at any moment so i try to if i'm on a football field i'm going 100 miles an hour um you know i treat every rep like a game rep and um you know like i said if you can get hurt walk getting out of bed every any morning so <laughs> uh you go out there on the football field you know what you're getting getting yourself into um you know, you're trying to prepare yourself, your bond, your mind, your body to play, you know, a football game because in a couple of weeks it's live bullets and it counts. So, um, yeah, that's what you try. You got you to gotta put your, your mind, your body in that physical strain, you know, to get to that point to be ready for week one. And, again, that's the key is whatever the veterans need to do to be ready to go against Kansas City, that's what the Browns' focus is and should be. And I think you hear it from a player himself, Anthony Walker, who we know is going to be a leader for this defense that, you know, yes, they are going to take the necessary steps. And I'm sure the Browns and the Giants staffs are going to talk and, you know, we'll get into kind of maybe concerns or what we want to see out of, uh, out of these joint practices a little bit. But, I mean, as a player, you're, you go in knowing that, yes, there is the chance to get hurt. But if you play and play, think about that more so you kind of put yourself more in that position instead of just going out there and getting your work done and knowing that your coaching staffs, your organization has your best interest at heart, trying to 
get the work in to be the type of team that we that the Browns can be this season, but also allowing the guys to build up to that level in the right manner and not seeing too many of the injuries as unfortunately we had that news kind of coming out of camp today. So, but Walker is going to be, that's the kind of mentality. I think that's what Jarvis Landry was saying all the way back in 2018 on, on hard knocks. Yeah. The, everybody talked about the, that quote and, you know, sometimes made jokes about it, but it's, it's the notion of you got to go out there, you got to put the work in and um, you know, as long as you're following all the proper practices and coaching staff's got your best interest at heart, you know, you're, you're going to go out there and you're going to get better as a unit. And you can't think about being hurt. Kevin Arnold, Voice of the Land podcast. Uh, before we go to break, what do you want to see from these joint practices? What, you know, what are you hoping to to see? I want to see this the starters get tested because it just it feels like the starters really aren't going to play much this preseason. As much as I would like to see, you know, at least a couple quarters worth. You're going to have a big break between the end of preseason, the beginning of the regular season. So if you're going to know that if the starters are said to be sitting out Sunday again after these joint practices, that means Kevin Stefanski and this coaching staff feels like the starters were tested enough against another team, not just their own team that kind of knows what's coming at them as camp goes on. Now another team that you can kind of scheme against, run your plays against, see what actually works for you this year in the second year of this offense. I think it's the, the starters getting tested by the Giants in the right manner and and even on defense them testing themselves against another team really getting that work in and I think that will go a long way in helping this team progress to the point they need to get to by week one. Kevin Arnold from the Voice of the Land podcast and I can step aside take a quick time out on the other side of the break three areas of concern for the Browns in these joint practices that's on Sports for CLE. Stay with us. Welcome back. Back to new friends, new classroom, and learning new things. Back to wearing shoes, man, like real shoes. Back to rushing to class. Back to having questions. Lots of questions. Back to vending machine dinners. Back to too much caffeine. Too late at night. But feeling like it was a night well spent back to pursuing your dreams and taking control of your future. Come back to go forward. Try C, where futures begin. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the original mattress factory. CLE continues. We continue talking Browns football. So Browns and Giants getting ready for joint practices out in Berea tomorrow and Friday. Uh, Brownswire.com, three areas of concern for the joint practices. Joe Judge and Freddie Kitchens. Now, Kevin Stefanski did reveal that he and Joe Judge are pretty good friends. He played with, with Joe's brother, um, and, and they kind of grew up same area of Pennsylvania. Um, but Joe Judge has had his team run in gassers and has had some wild stuff after there was some internal fighting there. And Freddie Kitchens, uh, BrownsWire.com points out, um, he was more concerned with Brown showing toughness against the Colts a couple years ago when they had joint practices than cooler heads prevailing. 
So uh, I guess those are areas for concern, uh, but Kevin Stefanski kind of alleviated some of those when he talked about the joint practices today, Kevin. Yeah, and I mean, you look at the, the, the aspect when they first started out the article about Joe Judge and Freddie Kitchens. I guess one thing that some fans may point to or and some people may have, did bring up over the last week or so with the Freddie Kitchens element coming back to town was, you know, is there any sort of animosity there between the players and Freddie Kitchens like we saw with Hugh Jackson and Baker and, and some of the other players when, you know, of course, the team went down to Cincinnati after Hugh Jackson was relieved of his duties as head coach of the Cleveland Browns. But this is, this is not that kind of culture. This is not that kind of team. So I wouldn't be, uh, I would tell fans not to be concerned about anything like that. The, the concern there between Joe Judge, Freddie Kitchens, more so the Giants, is just kind of how their practices have gone and hearing about the physicality of their practices first and kind of where they're at. I, I like the whole conversation as well about different levels of competition or, or the yep. different stages of competing that these two teams are at. The Browns, of course, trying to be a team that's contending for uh, for trophies for Super Bowl titles while the Giants are kind of trying to come in here and prove that they're that that they're worthy or kind of a good enough team to play against a quality opponent like the Browns and you just want to see both coaching staffs both organizations come to an agreement how practice is going to operate keeping both teams healthy but allowing both teams to feed that competition throughout practice against another team and allow that to generate and progress their uh, their teams going into the regular season. Yeah, and you mentioned the different stages of, of competing and where they're at. And, you know, training camp for the Browns is let's stay healthy, let's get our work in, let's go. Uh, the Giants have a lot of people that are trying to win jobs. And it's not that the Browns don't, but there are fewer question marks um, because of where the Browns are, are at versus the Giants. And I think that's a really valid point. Yeah, it, it is. And the Giants, yeah, there's a lot more guys trying to earn spots. That's why they may have to play their starters more in preseason games than the Browns do because the Browns have a core. But the Giants are also trying to save jobs with, you know, uh, rumors of the hot seat for their general manager, Dave Gettleman. And in a town like New York where the where the media will, will come at you and, of course, uh, want to see their team succeed in a – much bigger metropolitan area and sports town. I mean, the Giants have a little bit more that they're playing for, so you don't want that to hopefully supersede and have any impact towards the Browns and what they're trying to do as the Giants try to earn and save jobs going into 2021. And obviously the third area from, uh, for concern, injuries and physicality. And, you know, anytime you're, you've got guys from a different team that are doing that, that's – that's always a reason for concern. Yeah, I think New York and Cleveland both are would be concerned about about the injury aspect, uh, just how they're approaching their camps kind of has you a little bit more concerned as a Browns fan or a member of the Browns organization than it would a, as a Giants fan because of the emphasis that, that they that they have uh, on their practice plan and process. All right, before we, uh, before we wrap this one up, ESPN.com, bounce ba back candidates for each and every team for the Browns, Odell Beckham Jr. What do you think of that one? Love it because he definitely has the ability to be a comeback player of the year, and he's a comeback player of the year candidate with his skill set. Comes down to the same conversation we've kind of been having the whole time, Dave. Got to stay, got to stay healthy. Has to, if he can stay healthy, and Baker and him, I know that they were doing some extra work after practice today as well, doing some red zone work, seeing uh, videos of that after practice on Twitter. Uh, you know, as, if they can get on the same page and Odell Beckham Jr. can be the talented wide receiver on the field that he is on paper and stay healthy, he's more than capable of being a comeback player of the year and even possibly an offensive player of the year type candidate this season for the Browns. And if that happens, it'll be a fun fall uh, over at First Energy Stadium. Kevin Arnold uh, from the Voice of the Land podcast. Kevin, appreciate the time and the insight as well. Thanks very much. Always enjoy it, Dave. Thank you so much. All right, Kevin Arnold from the Voice of the Land podcast. That'll do it for this edition of Sports for CLE. Um, 
We will be back tomorrow, 4 o'clock. Uh, scheduled guest Hayden Groves as Hayden Grove as the Browns and Giants. Getting ready for those joint practices in Berea. We'll have plenty on that tomorrow. Sports for CLE at 4 o'clock. We'll see you then. Have a great night, everybody.